Bear markets, recessions, these are inevitable times. As an investor, it's just a feature of being an investor, but they're scary times to be an invest. What's the scary market success manual to help you thrive during these times? I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of the Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. I'm not going to go through all the stats that we've seen, but this stock market this year, and certainly the bond market, has made history in some really awful ways. Just recently, nine out of 10 weeks where it was, uh, where, where it was down, that hasn't happened in nearly 50 years. Uh, you know, we, it's the middle of the year and we keep talking about, oh, this is the second worst start to a year ever or, or third worst start to the year ever. My goodness, guys, it, we're halfway through the year. You can't keep saying this is a start to a year. Um, worst year in the bond market ever on record. Now the bond index hasn't been around for forever. So this is sort of unique, but there's a lot of different milestones and disappointing, frustrating milestones that this market has faced. Let's just summarize all that is it's a scary time to be an investor right now. And I've told you many times, we've told you on the Wise Money Show, unfortunately, this is a feature of being an investor. That recessions, bear markets, these things happen from time to time. The average inter-year drawdown from a high point to a low point is nearly 14%. That's pretty scary. That's a lot more than what people expect. We see recessions and bear markets, at, you know, one out of every four years approximately. So guys, you can't really avoid this, but it doesn't make it any less scary. In fact, there's all sorts of behavioral research, behavioral finance research that talks about how as investors, we're hardwired to be terrible investors because we, the emotions that we feel of losing are significantly stronger than the emotions we feel of winning, of gaining. And so it's just, it's painful. But if it's really painful and emotional and it's inevitable, how can you navigate these times successfully? What's the scary markets success manual? I've got five components right now that will help you thrive through scary market times. The first way to succeed during scary markets is to diversify your investment strategies, not just your investment categories or your asset classes. Now, what do I mean by that? The tried and true investment approach is to not have all your eggs in one basket. That's diversify. And really what that means at a pure sense is have some of your dollars invested in large cap US, have some invested in mid cap US, have some invested in small cap US, have those different, you know, spread out between growth and value and blend, do the same thing international, hold some emerging markets, hold some commodities, some real estate and some bonds. So spread out your risk. Therefore, not everything's going to move in the same direction at the same time. What many people fail to realize is when you need that diversification to protect you, when you need it to play defense the most, it typically fails. When you need it the most is when there's a crisis, when investors go risk off and they don't want to hold anything. It's at those times that markets move in very extreme ways. But unfortunately, it's a global market. And when people, when investor goes, when investors kind of at a, in, a, in a massive fashion go risk off, they don't want to hold any of that. They don't want to hold large cap. They don't want to hold mid cap. They don't want to hold international. They, wanna, they don't want to hold real estate. It, it is almost across the board, everything drops. We've seen that this year with bonds. We saw that in 08 with bonds though, by the way. We saw that during the crisis moments of the tech bubble as well. Um, so at and a longer scale, diversification helps significantly Okay, it helps to smooth out the ride and make sure that, you know, uh, because certainly after the tech bubble, large cap continued to struggle, but small cap rebounded, international rebounded. So having diversification helps over the long term, but during those crisis moments, those three, six to even nine, 12 months of, oh gosh, everything's going down, everything truly goes down. So the first kind of way to succeed during these scary markets is to diversify not just your holdings, but also your strategies. Have, have dollars that are in a diversified mix, but also use a strategy that maybe doesn't rely just on diversification, that can move with momentum or has some hedging to it, right? So we've talked about those before, but the big idea is to not have all of your 
eggs in one basket being all of your investment strategies in the same strategy. Use different strategies as well that are also tried and true, that aren't speculative, that aren't just fly by night. I mean, do all the research, but hold more than one strategy so that you're not only diversifying your investment holdings, but your investment strategies as well. Gives you an extra layer of diversification. Second, the second way to succeed during scary markets, focus on shares, not dollars. Focus on shares, not dollars. When you're looking at your investment statement or you log in and pull it up online, the very first thing you're gonna see because it's the biggest and it's the one that's gonna get the most emotion and attention is what is your portfolio worth? How, what is your account worth? Well, listen, that account value will change every single day, every minute of the trading day, depending on what you're holding, um, but those represent shares, okay? And when values drop, it, you, you can start to feel like, oh my goodness, my account is worth significantly less unless I'm losing all this money. And temporarily that's true, but focus on how many shares you're holding. And, and I, I like that, that's a, a, a different adjustment, um, a different focus that during these scary times, if you focus on the number of shares you own and continue to try to grow how many shares that you own, when the price per share inevitably rebounds, whether that's soon or whether that takes a couple of years, you'll have more shares that inevitably rebound, which eventually will lead to that account balance going back to where it was and surging well past where it was. Focus on shares during declining and scary markets, not values. Third, focus on the long term instead of the short term. Focus on long term instead of the short term to help get you through these scary times. As an analogy, if you're walking a tightrope and everything starts moving, your focus, instead of going to where your destination, where you're trying to go, your focus is going to go straight down, right? You lose focus of that long term, your focus goes straight down, and that's the worst thing that you can do during that moment right? Th then you get even more shaky. You start seeing the consequences. Same thing happens in your finances. You're saving, investing for the future. You've got a strategy. I'm saving 15%. I'm doing these certain things for the future. All of a sudden, everything starts shaking and your focus moves from that long-term thing that you're trying to achieve, that steady horizon, and goes short-term and you focus just on what's ahead of you or what's happening right now. And typically what people do, what can happen is you start you stop saving for the future, you change how much you're investing, you change your investment strategy, you stop doing some of the things that you needed to do when you were focusing on that horizon. Oh, these are the things that'll get you there. And instead your focus turns inward and goes short term and you stop doing those things and you fail to make progress. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, wait a second, I'm trying to retire in 10 years, my portfolio just dropped 25%. I can't retire if my portfolio is dropping 25%. No, that's, that your portfolio dropped 25% because that's the risk that you need to uh, expose yourself to to get the reward of helping you be able to retire at that time. Okay, so you've got to, during good times and bad, be able to navigate, all right, what do I need to be doing to get from where I am to where I'm trying to go? And you consistently apply that. You consistently do those things by focusing on that long-term horizon where you're trying to go. Work with a, your, your certified financial planner. Make sure there aren't, aren't adjustments that you need to make. But one of the big risks during these scary times is people stop looking at that future destination and the things that they need to do to get there, and they focus just on the short term what's happening right now, and they freeze, they pause, they go cold, and they stop making progress. Fourth way to succeed during scary markets, new contributions should stay aggressive. Now, that's gonna sound like advice and you've gotta take that to your certified financial planner and make sure that makes sense in your unique situation. But so often than not, people say, well, I don't like how much risk I'm taking. I wanna make some changes. And therefore, it feels like as I'm contributing new money, I'm, I'm putting $1,000 in my 401k and I look at my account balance and I've lost 2,000. Therefore, I've just lost that $1,000, i.e. go back to your buying shares, focus on shares, not, not values. And so you feel like I'm putting good money in after bad. Have you ever thought that? I'm sure you have. And so you say, well, instead of investing my $1,000 in the market, I'm just gonna put it in cash, okay? That is, if the only way to make money in investments is to buy low and sell high, that's the exact opposite thing that you should do. You should, with your new dollars, still be contributing aggressively, not speculatively, 
not putting all your chips on, on, on one color or one number or whatever, still be investing into the markets with new dollars so that those dollars are buying shares at lower prices. You'll be able to buy more shares at those lower prices as well. This is one of the significant flaws and mistakes that people make during these scary times is they take their new money and they put their new money in safe stuff. It feels good, it's just not gonna help you thrive during scary markets. So, if you need to take less risk, consider rebalancing your entire portfolio. But doing so, I would encourage new dollars in your situation, work with your CFP, but new dollars to continue to be invested in the markets so that you're continuing to buy low, buying more shares at lower prices. And then the fifth way to have success during scary markets is sort of the exact opposite of that. And that depends on where you're at. If you're close to retirement or in retirement, make sure you've got at least two years in cash. Now, you might hear that and say, well, what's two years? How much is two years? So here's what you would do. Take a look and say, how much money will I be drawing out of my portfolio for the next two years? If you're 35 years old, that answer is gonna be nothing. Therefore, you don't need much in cash, right? But if you're 65 years old and you take a look and say, well, yeah, I'm drawing 3,000 a month out of my portfolio. So therefore, over the next couple of years, I don't know, I'm gonna need 70 grand, 75 grand, you know, in that range, I don't know, something, something like that, that you should have that much money in, in cash, in short-term investments at all times. That's not something to immediately put in place during the negative a bear market. That's something that you should continually, perennially have is as you're sitting down with your certified financial planner, how many months do I have in cash? And as the market gets frothy, gets frothy, you're gonna to wanna to make sure, yep, I've got two, maybe three years in cash, okay? So that if we experience a downturn, a significant down, like bear market recession like we're seeing right now, you don't need to sell a lot of investments so that you can continue to have the same withdrawal strategy and lifestyle that you've had before. Nope. I'm not selling investments while they're lower, temporarily lower, lower price, because I'm getting my income from my portfolio. I'm drawing that out of cash. Therefore, I'm not having to sell investments while they're down. Have two years at least worth of cash in your portfolio. The challenging news is down markets, bear markets, it's a feature of being an investor. I wish we could avoid it. There are ways to manage through it, manage volatility, have the different strategies like I mentioned. However, there's no way to completely avoid it. This is, this is the reason why there's a, there's a reward for the risk that you're taking, there is. So how, if it's inevitable, you can't avoid it, how can you thrive during it? How can you have success during scary markets? Follow those five principles, work with your certified financial planner. There's a lot more than this, and for your unique strategy, your unique financial situation, work with your CFP to see which of these need to be applied, in what fashion, and what additional you need to do to thrive during these scary times as an investor. Work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com, that's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.